18 years. This show can vote. The show can 18. We've been doing Radio Dead Air for 18 years. Well, I mean, you have. I've been doing it for like 10? 10. Yeah, you've close to 10. Yeah. yeah. Probably, it's actually, I think a dead on. Long time. Long time. Yeah. 18. I've been doing it 18 years. The fuck was I, I thinking? The show through three states. I'm in a second marriage. I did the show. Let's see. One, two, three, four states. I've done it through four states. Yeah. God knows how many dodgy hair decisions. Show actually started originally in Florida. Florida. And I didn't I used to listen to the show because when it was in character, you said mean things about my character. Yes. <laughs> and now we're here many years later doing horrible stuff. Horrible news. Shall we, shall we get to the horrible news? Let's do the horrible news. Oh, my God. Oh, they want to know how many different computers you've gone through. I don't know. Many. <laughs> Each week, Catherine, the Radio Dead Air Arts, go out on the worldwide interwebs, find all sorts of horrible stuff, bring it back here for a little segment we like to call What the Fuck is Wrong with You? Oh, boy. So, uh... Fuck. These ki fucking kids. That's where we're starting this week. Fucking kids. I fucking... Good. Oh, Simba, Simba's feeling better. He went to the vet and he didn't bite anybody. Yay. And he had a cold and he's better. Thank you for asking. Fucking kids. So you can't, we've said often, you cannot turn your back on kids. You, you no, have to watch. No, your fucking car when they're eight. Um, actually, they'll, yeah, they'll steal your fucking car when they're seven. Two boys, 10 and 7, crash their family car while taking a joyride to the beach. Oh, it's a Lexus. Damn. Two boys in a Virginia foster home woke up early Tuesday and decided they wanted to drive more than 100 miles to the beach. And let the fact they were 10 and 7 years old stop them. Virginia police, state police say they first received a 911 report after 8 a.m. One of the boys driving the family's black Lexus, quote, all over the roadway. Concerned caller was driving behind the children and followed them east on I-64 while waiting for authorities to arrive. With the 10-year-old at the wheel with his seat scooted all the way forward, the boys kept rolling until they accidentally struck the caller's vehicle, then crashed into the highway's median. Somehow, nobody was hurt. Officials transported the boys back to their family some 37 miles away. Wow. <laughs> Imagine being the cop that takes that call. Like, all right, we probably got some fucking drunk. And then you show up and it's two little kids and you're like, huh. I gotta say it, 10 years old? Getting 37 miles without causing, without crashing anything, that's kind of impressive. It feels like something you would have done. No, I said I was on fire. I didn't drive cars. You what? Wait, what? What? Wait. He said he said houses on fire. Ah. Uh, My husband, ladies I and gentlemen. Fire. Child arsonist. Liked fire. Mm hmm I, I just... I like. Do you keep talking about building a bomb out of sprinklers? Sprinklers, sparklers, whatever. <laughs> a sprinkler bomb would be awesome. It wouldn't be very combustible, <laughs> but it would be safer. <laughs> How uh, you cannot trust children? You just this can't. This is like the third or fourth time we've had kids steal a fucking car. And they're getting better at it, too, progressively yeah. each time. They get further away. So I think before now, the record was, what, 10 miles or so? Yeah. Now they're up to... Those keys up fucking high. 37 miles. How does he... How does he... How I mean, do they... had to be standing up at the wheel. 
How do they see over the fucking wheel? Jesus Christ. Probably looking through the wheel. <laughs> wow. Fuck. Well, I'm glad they're okay. They're, you want to drive a hundred miles? So I've got to love this kid. Like, how hard could it be? Yeah. How hard? A hundred miles of the beach. And My parents do it, and they're morons. <laughs> They got most of the way there too. That's that's a really cool well, thing. Well, a third of the way there. Th well, that's. But that's pretty fucking good. Yeah. They might have gotten there. If not for those damn meddling adults. Uh huh. Alexis, now the though. Chad is just discussing the logistics of a sprinkler bomb. <laughs> Computer Ronan said, 10 and 7 make 17. That should be close enough. Yeah. That's not cumulative. Combined, they're a teenager. That works. Sure. And Alexis, too. I know. Fuck. <laughs> Wasn't like a shitty fucking dodge dart or something. <laughs> like a good neighbor. State Farm is... Oh, fuck that again. When we first started dating, Dan used to work for State Farm, and I used to joke that I was going to call the company with complaint because I would sing that song and he would not show up. I tried. It's false advertising, man. False advertising. It is. Let's go from kids doing badly with the driving to adults doing badly with the driving. Worse than the kids, probably. I have, alright. I've got an older truck. It's got a couple issues. There, there's a door that won't open quite right. It doesn't stop me from driving, but it's kind of a pain in the butt. I had to replace, well, when the tree fell, I had to replace the rear view mirror, but I replaced the mirror because, yeah. you know, you can't drive without a mirror. I understand that even on an older car, there are some base requirements. I mean, you can, because on my old Buick, the mirror used to fall, like... The mirror used to fall off all the time, and I could not afford to replace that shit all the time. So I just learned, I don't even use the passenger side view mirror in my car that has one, because I just learned not to need it. But, <laughs> but don't do that. Don't do that. Regardless, there are some things that are necessary to drive a car. Some components you can't get by without. Like, for example, a steering wheel. Yeah, I was going to say, almost all the round parts are really important. Also helpful, a seat. Pliers as a steering wheel. Okay. Police officers in Kings Lynn, Norfolk, pulled over a car that was missing a bumper, a side panel, and headlights. It also had a flat tire. When they, okay. walked over to, when they walked over to the car, they noticed the driver was using pliers as a steering wheel and was sitting on a partially collapsed plastic bucket in place was of a the seat. Was a British demon trying to prevent an 11-year-old <laughs> from kicking off the apocalypse? Topical. Topical. Neil Gaiman fans will get that. Um, let's, let's see. People are saying stolen car. No one would have stolen a car this fucked Who up. Who steal this car? This is like... After the car was stolen and stripped for parts. Yeah, here's here's some more pictures. Shall we enjoy them? Yeah, here's here's how the car looked. Sitting on a bucket. <laughs> well, that's high. There's the front panel, just not there. Also, I believe more than one of those tires are donuts. You have to click. I mean, I've told the story of my mom's one arm milkman before. <laughs> yes. Who drove really badly, and so he had his milk truck arranged such that he could steer it without the wheel, and if you complained about his driving, he would detach the wheel and hand it to you and say, well, then you drive. Chat, am I, am I correct? Are those, are, are, are those tires, um, are those tires donuts? Uh, yes. Yeah. Yes, they are. There, there's the, the cock pit such as it were as it is and there's that whole missing fucking like the whole front quarter of the car is gone like that transformer doesn't even have a left arm <laughs> <laughs> oh fuck damn it 
That's what this is. This is a Transformer after the big fight with Megatron. How do you look at this That's vehicle? A Transformer after a heroin bender. <laughs> How do you look at this and say, yeah, this is good to go? Like, were you driving to an emergency? No. Was something on fire and you were the only one that knew how to put out fire? Was there a surgery that only you are equipped to do? Were you a demon trying to stop an 11-year-old from kicking off the apocalypse? Like, if not, probably didn't need to be driving this car. <laughs> if you were just on, like, a cigarette run? And I, I, I want to... I, I want to point out to our longtime viewers that this is not the first time we've seen a car driven in this ramshackle condition. I think this is the first time we've seen pliers for a steering wheel. No, it's not, actually. We've, we've seen that before. And that is not what bucket seats mean. No, you, you saw it before. Yes, we have seen this before. Sorry, dog is... But I wanted to point out, this is not the first time, because if you look right here, this tweet sent out July 12th, 2018. So this, it, this is one of those, yes, it happened again. Is there just some sort of grapevine for kludge work that says, hey, if you don't have a steering wheel, just get a pair of pliers. Same pair difference. Pliers, they'll, they'll work the same. I was just, I... You know what? I bet you for anything, you could go to a go to a fucking junkyard, hand them a hundred... find a steering wheel. Well, sa find a steering wheel. Not only that, just hand them a hundred bucks. They'll hand you something that at least can drive with a steering wheel. Might not be a great car, but at least it'll be fucking roadworthy. But you know what? It's probably going to be a better car than this one. Yes. It'll have a steering wheel and a seat. Not only is he driving on four donuts, the donuts are flat. Yeah. You're defeating the purpose. You're driving on four flat spares, sitting your ass on a bucket. Biofreak says, you couldn't afford a $10 lawn chair. Yes, you could at least put a fake chair in there, like. No, bucket. Bucket. Bucket's bucket, fine. I should know is caving in. Yep. Yeah, you have a look right there. You see the bucket? That that's too big for your ass. I mean, your ass is too big for the bucket. That's the thing. You're caving in the bucket. So uh. what's plan F? Because clearly you've been through A through E. He's about at the point where he's just going to be doing a Fred Flintstone and just yeah. sort of ru just driving the car by running his feet on the ground. Oh, well, we have even we have even more driving problems. Um, We've been having a lot of transportation problems lately. This is sort of a combination of frustration with cell phones as well. Um. I have, on occasion, several times, had issues with my cell phone service, and I have contacted them very angrily about it over the years, the multiple providers I've gone through. Um, however, I've normally called them on the phone or emailed or used their support sites. Yeah. Or, at worst case scenario... I've gone to a store right. and spoken with someone there. I, I, this, this is, oh my God. This is not how you go to the store, guys. Not how you go to the store. Man complaining of broken phone crashes into Verizon store. Authorities say a 74-year-old man ranting about a broken phone drove his car through the glass storefront a Verizon store in North Carolina, 74 years old, no less. Police say Charles Michael Hager was uh, charged with assault with a deadly weapon and pro damaging property after he drove into the store at a busy shopping center Thursday night. See, now I thought maybe he was just a shitty driver, but then I read ahead. In a 911 recording, an unidentified caller says Hager had come to the store after it closed. All right. Point one, after the store had closed. Right. Which means you need to deal with that shit till tomorrow. 
came to the store after it closed, demanding that they fix his phone. Caller said no. Hager said the store needed to reopen. Well, no, they don't do that. They have work you hours. Need to, you need to wait your ass till tomorrow. Or they have a hotline. You can call. I mean, nothing's going to happen before. To, well, yeah, it, but if you don't have a phone, you can't call their hotline. You could borrow. Everybody's got a phone. Borrow a phone. Police news release says he first kicked the door, shattering glass. That's going to that's going to convince them that you need. You're, yeah. yeah. You know what makes me really want to help people when they break my shit? <laughs> and threaten me. Then he drove his car through the storefront. There it is. That shit was on purpose. That shit was premeditated. I broke a little I bit of glass and didn't. Did you after that. I broke a little bit of glass and didn't get my way. Let's break a lot of glass and see if I get my way. That's not going to make them help you. Oh, Tara, we're having problems with our service right now. We are? You're getting all robot Uh-oh. Do Uh-oh. I sound robot or look robot It's both. Oh, no. What's happening? Uh-oh. Oh. Let's try reconnecting. Hold on. Okay. Fucking Skype. Yay. Fucking Skype. Let's play fucking Skype, everybody. It's a great game. Fucking Skype. Fun for the whole family. Hello? Better? A little bit. Okay. We'll see if it holds out. Fucking Skype. That's actually working, Tara. You're joking, but it's actually working. (laughs) So, yeah, I just, how, how is this going to? This is not going to make them help you. The good news is the phones at the jail will probably work. Yes. The phones. You only get to use that shit once a week or so. Oh, my God. It, It just. How much do you figure that storefront window costs? A lot. You, you never had to deal with broken broken glass. Never had to pay for it. Never had to pay. Oh, so you never. Had, oh, wait. You, at 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 the uh, at a retail store, you never asked them how much is that going to cost to fix. You didn't fucking care. Okay. Fair Not enough. my fucking problem. Now you fu- you know how much I made. Not fucking enough to worry about it. I I was a little curious. I was kind of curious. <laughs> and that's what I was going to say. You want to know how much those people in that store are making? Not enough for your bullshit. And they're the ones who have to sl- have to sweep up the glass. Yes, and almost get hit by your car. Even if they're not qualified to sweep up the glass, they still have to sweep up the glass. Why? Because they work there. I just uh, J.M. Sierra says, I guess at least five grand. Five grand! So you could buy five iPhones. But instead, you're going to get a lawyer. Yeah, you get a lawyer. You get a lawyer, and you're going to go... It's going gonna, it's gonna to cost you way more than just having patience. Look, I know it's free. I know businesses are frustrating as shit. But here's the thing though. My years in retail have taught me everyone's like the damn kids, and I'm like the damn kids. But when something goes wrong, the damn kids are like, oh, okay. Fucking old people. <laughs> he probably doesn't even know how to work his fucking phone, and that's probably the problem. But old people, when I was at Starbucks, if we were like, oh, gosh, I'm sorry, we're out of X. Like, you insulted their heritage and shat in their milk. Like, and it's your personal fault. (sighs) That thing went wrong. Yep. Oh. I it wanted my fingerprint, and I kept showing it my finger, but it wouldn't do anything. Like, I am 50% sure that that's the problem with the phone, that he just doesn't know how to fucking work it. Mm. And his grandkids are sick of explaining it to him. Because he does shit like this. Let's have some more technical difficulties, shall we? This is this. Let's not. 
and this talk about some. And what's great here is this comes from Palo Alto, which is dead in the heart of Silicon Valley, which all people with coupons are the absolute worst. They are. But yeah. Shut up. Yeah, this story comes from right in the middle of Silicon Valley, which makes it all the more appropriate. I think this is a first. Burglar wakes up couple to ask to use their Wi-Fi password. Really? Sixty-something couple in Palo Alto got an unpleasant surprise on Sunday. They woke up in the middle of the night to find a masked intruder in their bedroom. He said he wanted to use the couple's Wi-Fi. No. <laughs> the burglar didn't get the Wi-Fi password he was looking for, however. The man leapt out of bed and confronted the intruder, shoving him down the hallway and out the front door. He then immediately called the police. Trouble maker was arrested minutes later. Palo Alto declined to name the 17-year-old suspect because he was a minor. Honey. He was arrested for burglary, a felony, as well as a misdemeanor charge of prowling. He was also arrested for providing false information to a police officer. According to police, he initially lied about his identity. Never going to work. Remarkably, this wasn't the suspect's only legally dubious attempt to gain Wi-Fi access that weekend. Just before midnight the previous night, police say, the same young man was found prowling around outside another Palo Alto home. When the home's residents came out and confronted him, he, he quote, asked to use their Wi-Fi network because he was out of data. They told him to get lost, and he rode away on a bike that turned out to be stolen from their backyard. <laughs> this kid is a hot mess. Look, I know you damn kids think that not having the Wi-Fi is a fate worse than death. Like, I have a teenage nephew, and I have two just about teenage nieces. And holy shit, if even the Wi-Fi password is too hard, it's like a problem. But I promise you're not going to die. Like, you're not. If you can't text your girlfriend, you're not going to die. He if could you can't play Candy Crush. It's gonna be okay. There are so many, but th th what's really, really the Wi-Fi? Really, my ass! You broke in for the Wi-Fi. You guys, Wi-Fi, everyone. Yeah, I mean, you can go and sit in a Starbucks all day and not even buy anything if you're white, and you can use their Wi-Fi. Starbucks has it. McDonald's has it. Buffalo Wild Wings has free Wi-Fi. Buffalo Wild Wings. Yeah, but they won't let you sit there without buying anything. You know, when I was when I was in Canada this weekend, in Hamilton, um, I I was like, wow, you know what? I don't want to use up my data. Maybe I should turn on my Wi-Fi. I was in next to a hotel in like a mall type. I turned on my Wi-Fi. There's like twenty fucking places free Wi-Fi. Just all over the place. You want Wi-Fi? We got, what, 20 goddamn places. We used to have a guy when I worked at Starbucks. He would hang out after closing out in front of the store because the Wi-Fi reached out in front. And, like, all the all the lights in the little strip mall would be off because we were, we were open later than everyone else. And he would just be sitting alone in a darkened parking lot on his fucking laptop. One night he was teaching himself to play guitar. And we're like, dude, you're just... You're just begging to get like murdered or mugged or something like. Please go home. I the the fuck he was looking. That, all right, the fuck he was looking for Wi-Fi. You don't break into someone's house. Can you imagine, and then you wake them up, and when they're freaking out, you go, Ex "Excuse me, can I can I have your Wi-Fi password?" <laughs> no, it's cool, man. I just gotta play Clash of Clans. I need to. I need to check my Instagram. <laughs> In this scenario, you have a lisp because teenagers have lisps because they all have braces. I don't know what my excuse is since I haven't had braces in 20 years, but I still have a lisp, but whatever. I just want the, the bullshit. What's the Wi-Fi password? Go home is the Wi-Fi password. No, that, that didn't work. <laughs> Do you not remember your Wi-Fi password? Uh, so we, shall we have some traditional Florida bullshit? 
Ah, uh, traditional Florida bullshit. And guess what? We got video. We we got we got fucking video. Jacksonville, Florida, which there are a few places more Florida than Jacksonville, Florida. But ja- I would I would wager to say Jacksonville, Florida is the most Florida. Really? Why? Have you never been to Jacksonville? I have not. All right, it's like the right. All I know about Jacksonville, it was that where all the experiments got done on Olivia on Fringe. It's like on the the Gulf of Mexico side, close to the Panhandle. So it's like if if you're doing like the triangulation thing, it's right dead center in the worst of of of. Did you hear Simba? Hi, Hi Simba. Simba. Uh, so yeah, we got video. Let's check it out, shall we? Here's some video. You know you didn't send me the link, right? Yeah, there you go. Okay. That is a man with a live alligator chasing people around a convenience store. And giggling like an imbecile. With its mouth taped shut. Can you do that to an alligator? Yeah, actually, legally, you can't. Um, Robbie Stratton's beer run may turn out to co- be more costly than an 18-pack of Bush. He-, he brought an alligator into a Jacksonville convenience store to help him with his purchase. Now, Florida Fish and Wildlife Conservation Commission is investigating the incident. Quote, they told me what I did was stupid and I'll be facing charges here soon and probably go to jail. Probably not, Stratton told Action News Jax. We'll see. What does that... That's not how probability works. That's not. Probably will or probably will not. (laughs) It's only one or the other. Right. The TV station posted two videos, first of Stratton and a group of men after the gator, which appeared, appeared to be four to five feet in length, was captured. One of the men stepped on the alligator's snout. He then grabbed it by the neck, held it aloft, and yelled, quote, Florida State, baby. Florida State, baby. Florida State, baby. I hate him. In case you don't get the connection, that would be the chief rival of the Florida Gators. In the next video, Stratton is running around the aisles of the store carrying the alligator, quote, Y'all still got beer? Y'all aren't out, are y'all? He then adds, quote, Go Gators. Go Gators. You can't just treat animals like that. Like, I don't generally wish ill on people, but I wouldn't feel bad if this gator took a few fucking toes off these assholes. You don't get to just walk up to nature and beat it up. He was holding an 18 pack of bush beer at the time. Stratton defended his actions, sort of. Quote, it's not like I was chasing grandma down at Publix with it or something. But you stepped on its face. Somebody should step on your face. See how you like it. Grady, really? This, the butthole, really? You, you... <laughs> Look at my butthole. He's, cl- he's, he's, he's vigorously cleaning his butthole. Look live at on my the butthole, internet. internet. Well, I thought Simba was going to sit at the gate and sing to us, but I guess he decided against it. I, I... He can now face a $5,000 fine and five years in jail. Good. Go to jail. Fuck you. Don't fuck with an alligator, you idiot! Yeah. Let's just, for the sake of, of of argument here, say your dumbass dropped the gator. Not only is it hurt, it's scared, and it's surrounded by people. Even if you taped its mouth shut, it still has those claws. Yeah. And the tail. And Gators it, are pretty much little death machines. It can fuck you. It can and will fuck you up in any way possible because... You scared it. 
and nobody will feel bad for you. you just, this is what this is Jacksonville, ladies and gentlemen. If you it's were like the only good line in Justice League, Lee, if she kills you, we'll cover for her. That's Shut a, up. You've seen a movie I haven't seen and won't see. I mean, technically, it was a movie, yes. <laughs> And finally this week, here's a, more shit with the animals. Here's one everybody sent me. And yeah, we have video again. Oh, yeah, these guys. Why was everybody fucking with the aquafauna this week? I don't know. We got more video. Let's have a look here. So this is at an aquarium in San Antonio. And if you watch to the uh, upper right of the screen. That gentleman is taking a shark out of the aquarium and stealing it. Two men have confessed to snatching a small shark from the Texas Aquarium's interactive touch tank then wrapping it in a blanket and concealing it in a baby stroller. Which is great, because what sharks really love to be is extra dry and warm. Miss Helen, the 16-inch long sh great horn shark, was returned to the San Antonio Aquarium Monday night, two days after the heist was captured on surveillance video. But it shows a man plucking the shark from the tank and carrying it away off camera, still dripping water. Another man is then seen depositing a blanket right a blanket wrapped item into a stroller and walking off, accompanied by the first man and a woman carrying a child. They say the men put the shark in a bucket before placing it into the stroller. The shark was recovered Monday night from a home filled with fish tanks and other marine life. The men confessed to the snark to the snark shacking. Shark snatching. Good lord. Say that six times fast. Shark snatching, shark snatching, shark snatching. Investigators plan to talk to the woman Tuesday. One of the men was knowledgeable about marine life and likely went to the aquarium specifically for that shark. No! It's, it's not a supermarket. No. It's a shark. It's not a fucking pet store. Oh my god, I just realized we're, we are now officially part of Shark Week. The, the, we, we're, we're, this is Shark Week. We're doing Shark Week. <laughs> we qualify for Shark Week. Hi, Discovery Yay! Channel. I just the they were probably gonna fucking sell it. That the nerve of these motherfuckers. Yeah. I it's, and then, like small sharks like that aren't terribly dangerous to humans. So like. I have heard of people keeping small sharks as pets. There's ways you acquire them. Yes. And it's not by stealing them from the fucking aquarium. If you could just take animals home from the aquarium, you best believe I would have a hippo in the backyard right now. Because there's an aquarium an hour away. She's not. Two hippos. She's not kidding. She would do it. If you could just take them home. She, she would she would take home a hippo. Dan, don't look at her. You couldn't stop her, man. No, he couldn't. Seriously. D you know her. If 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 you if you like if you're like, oh, you want one, just take it. It's fine. She would have, you come home that night. There'd be like 20 fucking hippos in the backyard. I don't know if we could fit 20 hippos in the backyard. You would try. I could I wouldn't want them to be unhappy. I could see you out there talking to your neighbors. Do you mind if, like, ten of these hippos come and hang out with you? Is that okay? Is that okay? They're fine. I mean, you have a pool and I don't. Yeah. They would just go through the fence and hang out in the pool. Yeah. He knows that if we're ever obscenely wealthy, we're going to have a little hippo habitat. Yeah, how'd that work out for Pablo Escobar? Well, we might not have it at our home. Like, we might sponsor a hippo habitat somewhere where I could go and pet them. And how did that, again, how, do you know how that worked out for Pablo Escobar? There are now hippos in the fucking Amazon. Right. But if I sponsored 
a professional habitat that wouldn't allow that to happen, but they would let me come and pet them. That wouldn't allow that. It'd be like fucking Jurassic Park. Let's be honest. Only without dinosaurs, it'd be hippos. You're mad at me for fire, but have you want to wreck an ecosystem. Have you never been to a zoo? They don't just let them wander around. Just, who the fuck? Who? Like, for her birthday, Ellen DeGeneres' wife got her a whole gorilla preserve in Africa. And if we're over that rich, I will have a hippo preserve. <laughs> Fluffer and others said, Tara spared no expense. <laughs> and I will make them happy. Uh, just, who... I we have a nice aquarium here in Charleston, and you can go and you can pet. They have like stingrays you can pet, and they have. Uh, well, yeah, the shark was in a pet tank. Yeah, they have it's just, and you know, but when you're done, you you leave it there. It's not like the butcher. You're not picking one. To, it's not like you're picking the lobster to take home. No, that's not how that works. You pet them and then you leave them there. Also, they have fucking video cameras, you idiots. Also, I'm pretty sure all those animals are tagged or chipped or something. Mm -hmm. They they tend to keep track of their fucking inventory. That's the, that's what that's something that's frustrating, especially with all these slate the, the spate of people being blatantly racist and getting caught on video. It's like, oh, I didn't know. There's video everywhere. Did you see the guy who followed a dude home? Yeah. Like, followed him out of his way just to yell the N-word at him a bunch of times. And now, yeah. like, he's his business has gone out of business and blah, blah, blah. And he was quoted as saying, I just don't understand all the hate. <clears throat> Everyone has a camera. Everything well, is a camera. Asshole little heart. Don't, if you're going to try and do something blatantly illegal, don't just try and be subtle about that shit because there is a camera watching you. Yeah. I mean, God. We live in a post-privacy society. At least have some like, pride. Privacy in, is a thing of the past. Have some pride in your work. Tool up for that shit. Get some masks. Go in there. Full Pulp Fiction style. Stand on the tables. Get Honey Bunny to steal the shark out of the tank for you. Because if you're going to do it, do it. Don't try to be all subtle, subtle and shit. I feel like you wouldn't get the shark out that way, though. It seems more likely to get caught. Well, no, then you take the shark hostage. Nobody follows us or the shark gets it. Oh, OK. I, I, I want to just leave the shark there where they know how to take care of. Uh, I was just the girl who just said she'd steal a hippo. I know. <laughs> you don't have to call me a hypocrite. I fucking know. <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Save your fucking YouTube comments, okay? I know. Oh, I, okay. Well, I guess the first thing we learned this week is take some pride in your work. Don't half-ass it. There are cameras everywhere. You're gonna get caught. You might as well look good doing it. Yeah, go get, get get go down like firing, okay? Get into a hostage situation with the shark as your hostage. Come on. Embrace the stupidity. I, I feel bad about us suggesting they traumatize the shark any further. Another thing is, if you, if you encounter wildlife, leave it the fuck alone. It does not want to play with you. It does not want to go beer shopping with you. It, it, it just, just wants to be left the fuck alone. And eat fish or whatever alligators do all day. I just... If, do you know, what? Tiffany and Debbie Gibson were in one of those shitty sci-fi movies together, and it was... It's one of the shark to puss, or... No, it was like a giant shark versus a gator, I think. Yeah. Or was it an octopus? I don't remember. Just re regardless, I mean, this is... I've I lived in Florida for about a year. I lived in Tampa in an apartment complex, and out behind it, there was a pond of water full of fucking alligators. And they had signs up that said, don't go near them, they'll goddamn eat you. They will kill you. They will kill the fuck out of you. They're not friendly. No, it's not just... 
you got you got so fucking lucky you were not like maul even even a four foot alligator yeah that's still third one of those four feet is a mouthful of teeth yeah. like a full quarter of that body is a mouth we've learned if you're in desperate need of wi-fi that's why we have libraries yeah go to the library there you go go to the library it's absolutely free they'll give you a library card you can do many wonderful things at the library. Um, video, they'll, they'll let you rent videos. They'll give you free Wi-Fi. You can print stuff. You can get books. There's a notary public, for fuck's sake. You know what you don't do? You don't break into some poor old couple's home and ask them for their Wi-Fi password. Cause no, you don't. When someone breaks into my house, it'd be like, oh, you need the wife? Oh, I'm sorry. Let me go get it for oh, you. Oh, man. Hang on. Let me get that for you. I'm a bad host. That's when I let Simba bite your ankles. And trust well, me, you will not enjoy that. Let Simba. Um, Simba has only bitten anybody once since he came home. And it's healing. He's been a very good boy. We've learned that if your phone is busted, wait for business hours. Yes. Don't make it worse. Don't make it worse. Peggy, on the other hand, bit our house gifts this weekend. <laughs> they're, they're learning bad habits from the new, the, the new arrival. No, she's, just, she's a moody teenager. Uh, like, she's really moody. Like, she's like, I love you. Fuck you, I hate you. We've learned that a pair of pliers is not a substitute for a steering wheel. No, 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 no. And sometimes the car is so far gone, brother, just let it go. <laughs> you just got to cut your loss. <laughs> And finally, we've learned, watch your damn kids! Keep those keys up high. Yeah! Keep those keys in the frozen peas bag in the freezer. That's what they will never... They will never look there. They don't have... They will never go near it. It's almost... Have you ever noticed when you're like a kid that frozen vegetables are almost like... It's like Westworld. Doesn't look like anything to me. Yeah. And just completely glaze over. Yeah, if you're looking in the freezer, you want like the Jello pudding pop. Or you want, like, you know, the frozen... You look in there, you don't even see frozen vegetables. Well, I've told you how my mom kept me out of the medicine cabinet when I was a kid, right? Oh, God. <laughs> my sister, when she was little, ate a bunch of my mom's antacids because they looked like little candies. Oh, and God. Had, like, bad to induce vomiting and everything. Mm -hmm. So by the time she got to me, my mom was very concerned about the medicine cabinet and the medicines that she kept in a shoebox and the cabinet in the kitchen. I was terrified of the Incredible Hulk as a child. That was like my greatest fucking fear to the point where as an adult, I wasn't sure I was going to be able to get through the movie, but I'm fine now. So she bought a booklet of Incredible Hulk stickers and put them all over the shoebox that the medicine was in. So I would be afraid to go anywhere near that box. And it worked, because I never had a medication incident as a kid. One of my sisters drank Woolite, the other one <laughs> ate an acid. I never ingested anything, because anything she didn't want me to eat, she just put a fucking Incredible Hulk sticker on it, and I was afraid of the thing. Woolite? Yeah, she drank Woolite. She still can't swallow pills. <laughs> <laughs> 